So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Fridays, a new DAX function every Friday. And in today's DAX Fridays, I'm going to answer a question that a lot of you have been asking. So it is basically time, and it is how do you find the last record on a table based on set of conditions? For example, how do you find the last invoice date per customer and per deal? So. We're not going to just create the DAX measure. I'm going to go through my thinking process when creating DAX measures. Okay, so hopefully that will wrap your hand around how to solve these kind of things and allow you to get more confident in creating DAX. So let's get started. Okay, so how do you think in order to solve this problem and i'm going to show you how i would think to do it so i've always started like how would i solve it how would i solve this how would i find the right information if i was going to do it manually if somebody gave me the table in excel how would i go and find it so we have here the contract number customer and invoice date and what i would do in order to be able to solve this is i will find the rows with the same customer contract number and customer number which are, are these and then oh, and then i would actually from the dates that i have there now that we've color we've seen it better i will find the last date right so i will go there and okay it is the 27th of november and then i will go to the next one i will do the same same contract number same customer that will create another table for us and that table we need to find the last invoice date which is that one and then the same and so on and so forth right so you, now you have two clues you can redefine your initial question as to what is the last invoice date when contract number and customer number is the same and you need to translate that into DAX. So you need to feed the engine. You know, the DAX engine does not know what you want to do unless you tell him what it is. So you have to say, create a table that has exactly the same thing. This, the same contract number and customer number. What is the invoice date? Okay. How do we do it in DAX? Let's go. Let's go to Power BI and I'll show you. So here we have the same data. Close and apply. Okay, so if we go into Power BI now, the question is basically, how do I create a table that has the same contract number and customer, right? That's the only thing that you need to do. Power BI will do the rest, or the engine will do the rest. So we're going to do new measure. Last invoice date. I already have one, as you can see, so I cannot have the same name. And then here's the thing, most of functions in, in DAX, you create first a table and then you tell it what to do. With calculate, it's unfortunately the other way. You say what you want to do and you say on what table later, which it is such a shame that they did it that way because you normally would go and say, okay, this is my table, it beats. It just, at least in my head, it sounds better. That doesn't work with Power BI with calculate so if we put calculate and let's give just for a second let's forget about what we're calculating we will go back to that but we need to create a table and can i do that it's going to give me oh, it seems like it works so we need to now create the table that we were talking about right so it's, we need to filter our original table which is called table where the customer is equal to whatever customer is on that specific row. So it's going to go row by row and say, okay, is customer equal customer? Yes. So we're going to say equal to selected value. So it is the value that is on that row, which is customer. And we want to have a table in a contract number equal to selected value and then it is contract number so this this thing this filter is going to give us 
these tables that we were creating here. This is one table, this is one table, this is another table. And then we have to tell them, okay, now tell me, what do you want me to do with those tables? And I say, like, okay, I want to have the last date of whatever that table is. So now we can go actually up here and say last date of, I think it's called invoice date. There you have it, right? So it says calculate the last date of these small tables that I'm going to send you. So the way it works is it goes here and it says, okay, is contract number equal to nothing? So it returns the first row. There's nothing to do in here. So you have the first row in there. And then it goes to the next row. Is this one equal to this one? Yes. Okay. Then we have a hit. Is this one equal to the yes that we have a hit and then you know it adds the entire table so you get the dates too and then is this equal this equal this yes equal this great it goes to the next one and it says okay is this equal to that no so it stops there and then it will scan the entire table and say okay are they equal or not because you know they're probably not in order and then it finds, okay, this is the, the table that we want. And it goes and it feeds this table into the function that it was last date, you know, the one that we wrote in here, table invoice date. So it said, okay, this is my table. What is the last date? And then it goes there and it gives you that. And then you're good to go. So, so now we're going to put the calculation inside and see how, what is happening. And then it says, okay, uh, this is same ca contract number, same customer number, and then what is that? This is not what we expected, right? Because we were thinking that it was going to feel, feel this table. But suddenly we're getting the same results. Why? Now, every time you get an unexpected answer from your measure, the best way to learn DAX is to try to understand why. What is going on? And what did I miss? In this case, what we missed is that the rows in here are action, acting as filters to our measure. So the table that was originally, sorry, this should be like that. No, this should be 39 everywhere. But the table that we thought in our brains that it was this, and it was, is getting filtered by this row. So this is acting as a filter too, which basically means that it is given, instead of filtering that table with three rows, it's filtering just one row and giving you the max of each row, which is the exact the same day. And that's not what we want. So how do we modify our measure in order to get the results that we want? We need to remove the filters. We need to remove that row filter that is happening. How do we remove filters? All. So if we go in here and we put all, we're not allowing those filters, the rows filters get into, or you know, the filters on the visual get into our measure. So now, instead of filtering one row table, it's filtering the three rows. And because it's doing that, look at what happens. Boom, 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 we get the right result, okay? So that's the way you should think. I mean, think how would you do it? Think how you can construct your tax measure in order to feed the tables that you need for it to give you the right answer. And when you get an unexpected, unexpected result, just try to figure out what's going on, what is getting filtered that I don't see, that I don't understand. And hopefully you will figure it out and get the right explanation. So the, the formula to get the last date or the last value of depending on conditions is basically like that. I hope this video was useful and um, I will see you again on Monday. So until then, if you want to enjoy more DAX videos, I have them here. So go and grab some more. Enjoy your weekend and see you Monday.